Volcanoes are one of the most destructive forces of nature. These volcanoes rupture the Earth's crust, allowing hot lava, gases, and volcanic ash to escape from a magma chamber below the surface. There are several types of volcanoes, most of which are classified by shape and size. The four main groups of volcanoes include the following stratovolcanoes, shield volcanoes, calderas, and midwater ridges. Stratovolcanoes have tall steep sides and are more cone shaped. Shield volcanoes are flatter and dome shaped. Calderas are largely formed depressions, and mid ocean ridges are underwater chains on the ocean floor. No matter their appearance, they've all helped form the Earth into the way it is today. With over a thousand active volcanoes scattered all around the world and countless more underwater, they are indeed a force to be reckoned with. These volcanoes are usually situated where tectonic plates meet. The plates are giant pieces of the Earth that fit together like a puzzle, constantly moving against each other at a very slow rate, causing friction. In addition, the ring of fire that traces the boundaries between some tectonic plates holds a string of volcanoes dotted with 75% of all the active volcanoes on Earth. On average, there are between 50 to 60 volcanoes that erupt each year. But these eruptions would shy away from a super volcano's eruption, one that nearly caused the extinction of humanity. How did the people come to know of this super volcano, and how much impact did it have on the Earth? Stick around to find out as we explore how the largest volcano of all time cracked the Earth open. The Route of Discovery The mystery began within the icy tundra of the summit region in Greenland. With his fellow researchers, a climatologist named Greg Zielinski was on a routine mission for the Greenland Ice Sheet Project. The ice sheet is an accumulation of ice dating back from 100,000 years ago. By getting a piece of ice to sample, known as an ice core, they are able to read its chemical history and discover the periodic shifts in temperature and climate of the past. One day, Zielinski made a significant discovery in one of the ice cores when he found around 2 to 4,000 megatons of concentrated sulfuric acid in the ice from 75,000 years ago. That amount of chemical is too much to be up in the atmosphere, let alone found in the ice sheet. In fact, the chemical was 25 times more than the industrial sulfuric acid pollution produced yearly on Earth. This puzzled Zielinski and got him wondering where the substance came from. A connection to the mystery. A thousand miles away from the discovered chemical in Greenland, a geologist named Michael Rampino encountered the same mystery when he studied an ocean core. Like the ice core, the ocean core allows scientists to trace shifts in the Earth's climate. When Rampino discovered heavier oxygen-18 on the specimen, oxygen-18 being more abundant in cold water. This confused him, because the ocean core shows that there had been a point in Earth's history where the temperatures had rapidly plummeted 75,000 years ago, the same time that the substance in Zielinski's ice core presented. Ocean temperatures had dropped nearly 10 degrees Fahrenheit over just a few thousand years, which in comparison to Earth's 4.5 billion year history is a blink of an eye. The findings were so surreal it led Rampino to quote, the temperature change that we saw in these deep sea core records was something like 5 or 6 degrees Celsius that's 10 degrees or more Fahrenheit, not over 100,000 years or even 10,000 years, but over just a few thousand years. Now, climatically, that's very surprising. That's very, very fast. That's very catastrophic. It had been as if someone had flipped the switch on the planet's climate from hot to cold, the geologist added. The missing link. Without the two scientists knowing each other, the specimens they examined dated the rapid climate change to 75,000 years ago linking the two anomalies. The ice core hinted at a global event where the Earth's atmosphere had been showered with billions of tons of sulfuric acid and ash. The ocean core also presented a cataclysmic leap in the world's ocean temperature, like a sudden onset of an ice age. Now, there are only a few phenomena with such a powerful force that could have triggered the change in the steady flows, such as an asteroid impact or volcanic eruption. When an asteroid hits the Earth's surface, it blasts debris into the atmosphere, blocking the sun's rays and cooling the planet. But these asteroid impacts do not produce sulfuric acid, the component Zielinski found in the ice core he studied. Volcanic eruptions are another possibility that may have triggered the rapid cooling period, and the eruptions do, in fact, produce sulfuric acid. However, they were met with another obstacle in their research, 
for even in the long history of the Earth's most significant eruptions, only a tiny fraction of sulfuric acid is ever scattered across the globe. Another scientist named John Westgate finds himself in the same situation as Rampino and Zielinski when he gets sent numerous boxes of volcanic ash from around the world. Westgate is a quaternary tephrochronologist, in simpler terms, a volcano detective. The volcanic ash gathered from every eruption is deemed unique, rarely falling a few hundred miles. A discovery would soon shock Westgate when he discovered that the numerous boxes of volcanic ash sent thousands of miles apart would trace their way back to one volcano. The scientists concluded that if a single volcano were responsible for the phenomena, its eruption would be the most powerful in recorded history. Thus, the search for the mysterious supervolcano began. Discovery of the Supervolcano In 1994, Westgate received another volcanic ash sample from Craig Chesna. The sample's origin is Lake Toba, Indonesia in Southeast Asia. The search for the alleged supervolcano would end when the sample from Lake Toba matches the same with the rest of the volcanic ash. The scientists were thrilled with the discovery and started looking into Mount Toba's supervolcano. This ancient volcano in the Barisan Mountains of North Central Sutra, Indonesia caused a massive eruption that shook the Earth to its core 74,000 years ago. Its eruption had been considered the largest volcanic eruption in human history, sending the Earth into a severe ice age that lasted for at least 1,000 years. This supervolcano had been dormant for millions of years, accumulating pressure in its magma chamber and draining the underground reservoir. When Mount Toba erupted, it spared no expense in the severity of its explosion. The eruption wreaked havoc on Earth, sending billions of tons of ash around the planet, blanketing the planet with a poisonous yellow haze. An eruption of this extent annihilated all life within the wide radius of the volcano, ranking an 8 out of 8 on the VEI, or Volcanic Explosivity Index. The disaster left a massive crater where Mount Toba stood, shaping the Toba Lake surrounding it. This calamity also caused scientists to link the Mount Toba eruption with the genetic bottleneck in human evolution about 70,000 years ago, when the population severely decreased to 3,000 to 10,000 surviving individuals. A genetic bottleneck is a sharp reduction in the size of the population due to disastrous environmental events like Toba's eruption. When a volcano erupts, it releases a massive gas and ash cloud. Breathing in the particles from this cloud easily compares to breathing in tiny needles. The particles then combine with the moisture in the lungs, creating a kind of cement, causing an individual to suffocate and choke to death. With the severity of Mount Toba's eruption, scientists theorized that it might have been the critical factor to the genetic bottleneck, as well as the global destruction of vegetation. In addition to Mount Toba, Indonesia is also the home of Mount Tambora and Mount Krakatoa. The country is no stranger to the presence of active volcanoes as it sits directly atop the Ring of Fire. Mount Tambora 